there's mist on the water. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in a canoe. Beautiful. And you said something about something looking like glass. The water is like liquid glass. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. Look down at your feet. Do you have a body? Yes, I do. Are you wearing anything on your feet? No, my feet are bare. How many toes do you have? I have 10, five on each feet. Mm -hmm. Look at your hands. How many fingers do you have? I have five fingers. Mm -hmm. Each hand. Do you feel female or male? I have big hands. I feel like I'm a male. I'm mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. and Good. What are you wearing? My chest and arms are bare. Is there anything you have with you? Anything you're carrying in, in this canoe? I think that it's empty. I'm by myself, I'm sitting in the back. Mm -hmm. Look all around you. Is it a day? Is it night? It's daytime. Mm -hmm. There's fog. There's fog on the water. In places, some places more clear. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get dark. It's starting to get dark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're doing here? I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. I was settling my canoe, but now I'm just sitting. Mm -hmm. Is there any jewelry pieces you're wearing? Any what? Jewelry? Oh, jewelry. I have a necklace on. It has it feels like there's mm, either a string or leather or something, but then there's like larger pieces on it in the front, like maybe claws, but there's also something round, animal claws, mm -hmm. And then something round in the middle, like flat. A disc. A disc? Yes. Is there any gems on it? I'm looking at it, I don't see. Mm. Maybe there's like blue beads. It might be turquoise, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Trust your very first impression, you're doing great. Um, is there, what color, is there a metal to it? 
it looks kind of a little bit shiny-ish, a little shiny, um, mm -hmm. a little iridescent, but I don't think it's metal. I think maybe shell. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Anything else standing out? Look all around you, whether on the canoe or all around you in this water. Anything stands out of importance? Okay, there are loons. I see loons on the water. Say that again. There's a, a loon on the water, and it has a baby on its back. There's a, a what on the water? A loon, a bird, a loon. Oh, okay. A bird, and it has a baby on its back? Yeah, there's two, there's two, two loons, actually. Mm -hmm. And they're close to me on the water. Mm -hmm. One of them has a fish in its mouth and it swallowed the fish. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's fast forward a bit. Let's fast forward a bit to when you start doing something else besides just sitting there. You are there now. What do you see? I'm on the shore, and it looks like I I have a, a fire and maybe a camp or something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like it's, um, doesn't feel like it's my home. It's just a place I am right now. Yes. And I'm whittling, I'm using a knife on something. I thought maybe it was whittling like a stick or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Feels like a knife? Yeah, it, it, I have a bow and an arrow, and maybe I'm making an arrow shaft. Mm -hmm. I'm looking down it to see if it's straight, and I point it up to the sky. Mm -hmm. I see a moon. It's a sliver of a moon. Beautiful. Do you feel like you're young or you're old? I feel fairly young. Mm -hmm. I feel I'm in the prime of my life. I'm very, very strong. Big arms and big muscles. Mm -hmm. If you could imagine how your face looks and then your hair, how, how, how do you look? I saw, um, I keep seeing something big on my head like I'm wearing a, a big headpiece. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and I, I see paint on my face I don't think this is what I normally I don't think I usually wear this on my head or my face I just wanted me to know about it but it's not something I would wear mm -hmm. normally with what I'm doing here by myself what is it um, what is it made of the, the headpiece I feel like it has short horns, maybe like a buffalo headdress. Mm -hmm. And now they're showing me being around a campfire with all my people mm -hmm. and um, dancing mm -hmm. and drums and lots of people like me. Yes. But I'm little. They're all watching me. Mm. I'm dancing. What tone is your skin? I have I have brown skin. Mm -hmm. Do you still have paint on your face? I have a lot more paint on my face. What colors do you have? I have white and a little bit of red. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. 
Now, why is it that you're having this um, dance around the fire? What does it signify? The little child said to me, you, you play for us. Mm -hmm. You tell us things stories about where we're from. Mm -hmm. And the songs. The songs tell us the stories. Mm. Oh, uh. how there's with it. Now there's one. They're showing me the stars. Mm -hmm. Not the children showing me. It's it's my real people. Mm -hmm. Allow for those emotions to come forth. What is it that you're feeling? I miss them all. I miss where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I just came here for a while to be with these people, but that's not where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I had a very peaceful life with these people. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was a medicine man. Some of them are from where I'm from too, but most of them are not. Mm -hmm. Why are you here if you're not from here? Why are you there? That said to me that he wanted to go. You wanted to come. You said you would do it. Mm -hmm. You needed to tell them. You needed to show them. You wanted to. Mm -hmm. Where we're all from. Where are you from? In your, it's in your heart. Mm -hmm. I'm from a place beyond the stars. We needed to show people the way of how to find their home. Yes. In their heart. And how are they? Are, are they understanding? Mm -hmm. oh. I feel like I tell them things they only understand a tiny bit of what I tell them. Mm -hmm. I told them many, many stories. They like the stories, but they don't understand what I'm really trying to say. Mm -hmm.
It's okay though. It's just they understand what they can understand. They can't understand everything, but they understand what they can. Mm -hmm. Are you? You can say, are you different than them? Are you saying that you're? Are you from a different land or a different place beyond the stars? Even in the village, I am from a different place than they're from. Mm, okay. How is it that you know this? How do you know that you're from a different... Are you saying you're from a different planet? Um, yes, I'm from a different place. I watch them. Mm -hmm. They're very happy people. Yes. But I watch them when I know I'm not the same. Mm -hmm. How about the medicine man? Is he also from beyond? Yeah, that's it. That, that when I'm him, I know I'm from somewhere else too. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you are different than the others? And why do you remember? This lifetime I was born remembering. Mm. I remembered when I was very young and I remembered more and more and more throughout my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I think some of them know. I see an old woman and she knows. She knows we're from the same place. Mm -hmm. I feel she needs to tell me something. Yes. Let's go see if she has something to tell you. I think she told me lots of things. As I was growing up, I learned many things from her. She's She's um, using the mortar and pestle, she's pounding herbs, and she doesn't have any teeth. Mm -hmm. It's twinkly eyes, you can barely see her eyes, but she, she tells me anything I want to know. I've asked her many questions. She told me everything I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. But I knew it all. I knew it too. Mm -hmm. I knew it when she told me. I knew it before, but I know it more when she tells me. Mm -hmm. And she says, this, this lifetime is just in preparation. In preparation for another, another lifetime you will have. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a number, I'm seeing 17, it's a year. The 1700s. Mm -hmm. She says, You will. You're living all of this now, so you will have stored memories mm -hmm. of a lifetime on Earth to fortify you in the next one. Mm -hmm. This lifetime is calm and peaceful mm -hmm. and tranquil, so you could anchor into the energies of Gaia, make a strong connection to Gaia, because you will need it in your lifetime to come. It was very hard. They serve a purpose. You are here to help clear karma. You will take on karma that isn't yours. Mm -hmm. Many, many memories. You accept these memories as your own. 
Mm -hmm. It will be my joy so when the time comes to clear them. You understand you clear them is easy to do, even though it seems hard. You and the others from your group are coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So others from your group or where you're from, do you all have a name for them? Do we have what? A name for them. So others from oh. the She says we're from the Pleiades, but that's not where we're from beginning. Mm -hmm. She says you're the creator. Mm -hmm. You created all of this. Mm -hmm. You made this. This is your experiment. You have to come down and get inside of it so you can fix it mm -hmm. or it went wrong. Fix it from the inside. What else does she share with you of importance? She says it was apples and then she hands me an apple or she shows me an apple. I don't know what apples are. Ask her. What is the significance to that? What are the apples? What are the significance of the apples? What are they? What is the seed? Is the seed inside of the apple? Mm -hmm. Something happened to the seed. Mm -hmm. The seed got changed. Mm -hmm. When things started growing that weren't supposed to, it's not what we intended. Mm. But it's okay though. Everything serves a purpose. But I heard off track. Something mm -hmm. got off track. Do you know what that was? Or does she know what that was? That got off track. The way forward, they got stuck. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get out of it the way it was. Mm -hmm. I'm showing apples that have a bad core. Mm. And how can we heal the, the bad core within the apple? She says, you know what to do. You will know what to do. Mm -hmm. You have to discover it along the way. If I tell you now, mm -hmm. if you know going in, you have the memory, then you can't fix it. You have to fix it from the other side. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. This is why you don't have a memory of who you are going in. This is very hard. Mm -hmm. We know this is hard. 
front. It's hard for the ones that come in with the memories. Yeah. No, it's hard for it's hard for those who have no memory because they mm. they feel it. Mm -hmm. They feel it inside of them, but they don't know why. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they wake up, you'll wake up and you'll begin to know step by step the way to go. Who you are, we will show you. We will tell you, but it has to be in pieces. Mm -hmm. Little pieces like breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. If you know too much all at once, you lose your ability to connect with the people around you. You would not be like them. Mm. You can't help them unless you're like them. This is why your memories are erased. But the seed inside of the rotten apples are good. The seeds are good. Mm -hmm. Even though the fruit has gone bad. Now she's showing me seeds and she's having me put them in my pocket. Mm -hmm. She says, it's time for me to go now. I've done everything I need to do here. Oh, she gives me the necklace. She takes it off her neck and she puts it on mine. Hmm. When she gets me something in my hand, I thought it was like a rabbit's foot, which seemed odd. But it's actually like a mm -hmm. the hoof of the deer. The what? A hoof of a deer. A hoof That's of a deer. Bird on it. A hoof. Mm -hmm. So she put the necklace on the she put the gun. Yes. Is she saying her goodbyes? Yeah, she's saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. She says, I hope that to remember I have a path to follow. Mm -hmm. And what is the necklace for? This is for protection. And it connects me to home. Mm -hmm. it carries the energy. Go ahead. It carries the energy of where, of where I'm from and where I'm going. Mm -hmm. It helps guide me. And even if even if I don't have it on my physical person, it's on me in the, in the energy field. It's energetic. Mm -hmm. and what does it protect you from? People to people. Who don't want me to be here. Mm -hmm. They don't like it that we're coming. Mm -hmm. 
So what does it do to protect you? It creates a shield. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very powerful shield. I will always be protected. Nothing can ever, ever touch me. It's not meant to touch me. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong. Now I'm seeing myself different and seeing myself in my form of who I, my form where I come from. Mm -hmm. I'm female, I'm a feminine energy. It's mm -hmm. very, very, very strong. I feel like a goddess. Mm -hmm. I have so much knowledge and wisdom with so much power. Mm -hmm. I'm looking out at the world. I have a crown on my head. I have a scepter in my hand, like a or a wand. It's a long wand. Mm -hmm. And my gown is blowing around me like I'm blowing in the wind and I have thick, long hair blowing in the wind. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have a lion, a lion by my side and I'm holding like a leash of a lion. Mm -hmm. And my robes are like thin gossamer. Um, Glowing, purple and blue, more blue. Mm -hmm. um, big smile on my face, and I have wings. Mm -hmm. There's other people in my group with me. Mm -hmm. and we, we're all looking at Earth like we're ready to go. We 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 want to go. Mm -hmm. I feel like we are going into battle. Little group, ready for it. How many wings do you have? I thought I had two in two parts, but actually they're saying I have four. Mm -hmm. Two on each side, and they're kind of divided, though, so it's almost like there's eight. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And how many are in your group that are ready to go? I heard him say six. Mm -hmm. Do they all look like you? I'm trying to see them and I can't really see them, but I'm hearing that yes, they do look similar. Mm -hmm. Each different, each of us have our own unique look. Yes. Is there males, more divine masculines as well in there, as well as feminine? Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, I, they, heard, they said three. So we're pairs, we're three and three. Oh, beautiful. Now, are they twin flames? They said yes. Mm -hmm. And you have wings like an angel. Are you an angel? They said seraphim. That's right. Beautiful. Thank you. That's, um, thank you. That's what I saw when I connected you to your higher self. Beautiful. Now, How's your skin? Do you have a skin tone or is it more energy? How does it look? I feel like I'm going to, they're showing me a body. This, mm -hmm. this thing is not, this is, this is how I like to look. This is how I like to manifest myself. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, it's a body, but it's a light body. Mm -hmm. And I have a, Medium tone. 
kind of iridescent-y, sparklish sheen to it. Reading to light. Mm -hmm. So basically you manifest yourself into what you like to look like. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like to look this way. Yes. And you said you're getting ready, like you're going to go into a battle, but in this realm here that you are with your, um, are they like your brothers and sisters? Um, they're not giving me the right word. They said, yes, no, mm -hmm. we're all partners. We're, um, mm -hmm. they're co-creators. Mm. Is there a name that you go by as a, as a group, as a collective? I said we're part of the ancient ones. Mm -hmm. We're of the ancient ones. Ancient race? Ancient ones. Ancient, ancient ones. Yeah, we humans, ancient. ancient, ancient, right? Yes, ancient ones. Mm -hmm. We humans have a race that we call um, ancient race. Is that the same? They kind of laughed and they said we're, we're more ancient than the ancient race. <laughs> Very good. They said we made all of this. This is ours. This is our creation. Mm -hmm. We did this. We're responsible for everything that happens here. Yes. That happens we love here. it. Go ahead. We love it so much. Uh -huh. It's not going to fail. We're not worried at all. <laughs> <laughs> we're not at all worried. Mm -hmm. Only, only, only when we're in our human form do we have any worries about it. Yes. But still, there's a job to do, and we're we're facing it a bit <laughs> <laughs> to get down into it. Do you have a name? Arya. Of course, I'm Arya. <laughs> Arya? Yeah. Do you also go by Ariel or just Arya? Some people call me Ariel, but mm -hmm. Kimberly knows me as Arya. Mm. Beautiful. And who are your your partners there, do, um, could they share their names with us? I have Lisa and Joe. They're a partner, a pair. Say that again. Lisa and Joe. Mm -hmm. Anybody knows them as Lisa and Joe? Mm -hmm. They're a partner, they're pairing. Yes. They're twin. And of course, Kimberly has Arendelle, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Arendelle? Arendelle. Mm -hmm. That's what she knows. It's, okay. It's higher self has. Mm. There's one more. She doesn't know them mm -hmm. now. She hasn't met them yet. Yes. One more partner pairing. Don't know who they are. Am I speaking to Aria right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Greetings. Thank you, sister. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to, be, pleasure to meet you finally. Yes. <laughs> the honor is mine. 
But we already know each other in the higher consciousness, all right? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Very good. We talk all the time. We what? We talk all the time. Yes. Yes, we do. How do you relate if, um, how do you relate to the 13, the 12 elders? We're, we're part of them too. Mm -hmm. This is our group. Would you say that you're kind of like a branch from there? Like a, like if you were to separate in a sense? There are many branches. We mm -hmm. are one. Okay. Beautiful. And who do you see oversee? Do you see the earth? We oversee Gaia. Mm -hmm. This is our this is our main priority right now. Yes. Of course we have many others we've mm -hmm. been involved in, but we've come here for a very long time. We spent All of our time here, for Kimberly's sake, this is all we need to focus on. This is her. This is us. This is why we're here. Beautiful. Thank you for being here. As, uh, as always, I honor you, I love you, and I respect you, and I thank you. And since you are here now, may I ask questions of the life that you showed her? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Now, you showed her in a life where she was on a, con a, on a canoe with the foggy water, and then she turned into, um, she saw that she was in a village, and she very much knew that she wasn't from here. She was from beyond the stars. Now, um, why is it that you showed her this life? This life was calm and peaceful. It was an important starting point for her journey. Mm -hmm. She can go back here in her heart, and she does. This is where she connects when she's in nature on a lake. It's this energy mm -hmm. of calm, of knowing. This lifetime, she had much expanded conscious awareness of her origin and who she was why she had come she also understood something of what was to come she had prophetic insight mm -hmm. into many things sometimes she feels she doesn't know very much now, but this is all implanted inside of her through the memories of that lifetime on Earth. So that even when she's not fully conscious and aware of what is happening now, or why, or what her mission and her journey are, this anchors her to Earth and also to her home. This is her place, a place of peace and solitude, a refuge, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's all in that right now. She chose not to show other lifetimes in other realms. It's not pertinent for her journey this time. Mm -hmm. She understood, knows that she does come from beyond the stars. Yes. She's an ancient one. does not need specific memories just to trust. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know that they mentioned that um, at some point in this life she was uh, from Pleiadians. What is your connection as uh, Aria? How do you say your name again? Aria. Aria, yes. I want to say Ariel because that's what we're used to calling you, but 
I am going to go with Aria. I think that's even more beautiful. Those are both beautiful. <laughs> um, what is your connection to the Pleiadians? You as Aria. We were there a very, very long time. Very long time creating. Mm -hmm. Living in it, creating it. We did there what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. That before, and we came here to create and make this. She's, we've told her this before, she's a creator. Mm -hmm. But you have a hard time trusting this. Mm -hmm. One reason why I go by our Keep your eyes closed. Okay. One okay. of the reasons why she goes by Aria? Is that what you said? She goes by Aria. Mm -hmm. She knows me as Aria. Mm -hmm. Because if you're to connect with the idea of Aria rather than an archangel, Yes. Now, so you said you uh, you work with the Pleiadian um, existence there, that that galactic area there. Um, and did you did they start off in a three dimensional? Is that what you're saying, or how was it that you worked and developed them? Now we created the Pleiades as well. Mm -hmm. We were the creators. And when they originally say started off as a as a, a galaxy, um, were they what dimension did they start off at? What did the, the Pleiades start out? What dimension? Yes, because right here we're at the third and fourth dimension. What was it that you created that area? of existence, where, where was it that those beings started off at, what dimension? I'm hearing the seventh dimension. Okay, so they didn't have to go through the evolution of the third and the fourth and all those, they just went straight to the seventh? No, they did that somewhere else before, before mm. the Pleiades. Yes, very good. So therefore, in a sense, are they in a sense like our future? The Pleiades, yes. Yes. Earth will do that. Earth will go there. Mm -hmm. So would you say we're in in a in a sense like our our past, and then we evolve into the another dimension and another existence and another race? And as it's we, the same, it's the same process that goes through. Mm -hmm. That we carry the, the we carry the creation through from the beginning of it. Mm -hmm through to its evol evolution, evolving mm -hmm. up and yeah. Okay. That's what we're doing here. We've done it before. Yes. We're doing it And for example, um, you six, were you in charge of the Pleiadians? Did you help create them or were there others also involved in creating it? Many, many others involved. Yes. Did you, but they, would you say that you oversaw it as a six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The six of us, we oversaw a part. There was a, we had our own okay. area mm -hmm. with many others as well, but we oversaw it. Beautiful. And let's see what else questions I have here. And in that existence that you showed her originally where you were standing there with your six brothers and sisters and you could pretty much manifest whatever, um, you know, um, body, um, however you six were standing there, what dimension was she, were you showing her there that you're standing there in that dimension? What number is that? 
We're showing her in the sixth dimension. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's, it's the sixth. There's something in between. Would you say that in a sense you're, are you stuck in the six currently to be able to move up to the seven until the third, this area here moves up itself? Yes, we came, it's like a dial. We dialed it down mm -hmm. so we could connect with her the fifth dimensional consciousness. Mm -hmm which she's working to connect with her third and fourth. Okay. Let me see what else I have here from the life. Is any other? And you said that it was a, um, oh, what they said, uh, the lady, the elder that was talking to her, him in that life. She said that it was, Something happened, we were like an apple, and then the core ended up going bad. The seed was still good, but the core was bad. What happened that set it off track? There was some trouble that came in. It was unexpected. We didn't know. It wasn't. We'll say it like this. There were many possible timelines that could have occurred so it's not like we didn't see it coming mm -hmm. we knew we knew it was a possibility it's a pollution an energetic pollution mm -hmm. considered pollution by um it changed it it off in a different direction mm -hmm. we were we were not alarmed it was more like oh okay so now this is happening i feel like it's an anticipation of this is going to be a fun challenge <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting, but it was different. We hadn't dealt with it before. No one had. Mm -hmm. Nothing like this happened in the, in the Pleiades. Mm -hmm. We had our own segment of the Pleiades, our own planet we worked with to evolve, but we were in close contact, of course, with all of the creators of that area of the galaxy that region of the galaxy you know as Pleiades mm -hmm. many many different things happen in different planets there but nothing like this mm -hmm. in a sense you could say nothing even close to prepare us for what would happen here mm. we, were, we were up to the challenge but I see many I see a call, a call goes out. A call goes out and many, many, many of the highest and most able creators, they all come, not just from the Pleiades, but from other places as well. That's why so many, many, many different places are involved in Earth at this time. People don't understand this. this is not this is not normal. Mm. A distress call if from a human perspective, distress again, I must say from the overall picture of all things, we do not see it even as alarming. But it was it became apparent the project would be too big to handle on our own, so we called in others to help. Mm -hmm. If it weren't, if it couldn't be brought into balance, it could 
have very far-reaching implications. It could be very, I hear the word catastrophic, but mm-hmm. we weren't going to let that happen. Potential is there. It was a fine line to walk between. We wanted to see what would happen and let let things evolve as they were because that's the that's the rules, that's how it has to go. But a fine line to steer and guide it from causing too much of a ripple effect of destruction. So many of us entered into the creation along the way as needed, guide it, help direct it. Mm-hmm. But I did not enter I did not enter until more recently. Mm-hmm. Continue to watch the project from and work with it on energetic level from higher levels until now. Yes. If you could go more into detail, I know you said it was like a like a pollution. Where did this pollution come from? Outer, outer realms, other dimensions. Mm-hmm. With a conscious entity. They're showing it riding on. This is this is symbolic. This is not really how it was, but they're showing it like it. I'm getting like a red, human-like, demon-looking dragon. That the top of its head is. Instead of hair, it's fire. He has a. He's like laughing. We would say, humans would say evil and scary, but we understood that's not how it was. Mm-hmm. He's riding on a piece of like rock, I would say like an asteroid. Mm-hmm. He comes to Earth. It's like a big joke to him. Mm-hmm. To get in there and he lands and he's running all over the Earth. feel like you would say a naughty child who comes and spoils some other child. Another child is creating a beautiful sand castle and it's coming together perfectly. And another little naughty child comes along and kicks it all to pieces. Hmm. So he, was he alone on this, on this asteroid looking type? Is it I of- saw him alone. I saw him alone, but when he comes on earth and lands and he, he like, Suddenly, he's many, 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 many. He hits the earth, and there's many of him all over, running around. Mm. This asteroid-looking thing, is was that a spaceship? I think, like... Yes, I thought it was an asteroid, and they're saying it's an asteroid-like ship. Mm. It was a ship. Were the others inside this asteroid-looking ship? Yes, when it landed, they came. And do they all look like him with red skin? Um, would you would you say that he's a reptilian alien? Yeah, they're showing me his legs and his tail, like a reptile. Mm-hmm. But he's standing, is he standing upright? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now they're showing, mm-hmm. they're showing him like full. Now they just look like people on Earth. Mm, okay, so originally they look like reptilians? Yes. And now they look like people? Now they look like people. Mm-hmm. And what dimension was Earth on? What number dimension was it on when he landed? They're saying fourth. They were in fourth. Mm-hmm. Earth was Earth was in fourth dimension at that time. They went backward. Mm-hmm. They brought it. We were almost going to fifth. We were almost in fifth at that point. Mm-hmm. But there were problems already. Mm-hmm. We knew this would happen. We allowed it. Mm-hmm. Why? It was for the lesson. It was for the experiment. We wanted to see. We wanted to see what would happen. Mm-hmm. And when they landed, did they did they hide, or did the humans see them land, and or did they know how they actually looked in their forms as reptilians? They're showing me, and this is representative, like like it's representative is somewhat realistic, but not. They're showing me like warriors with shields and swords, the reptilians changing to like warriors and people fleeing in front of them. Mm-hmm. So they were like conquerors. They they just, everywhere they went, they conquered the people. The people were very simple. Mm-hmm. So was it an evolving, like they shifted into a human form or did they, how did they turn into humans? Human looking. I think some were born and some so now I'm seeing from looking at from humans looking at them and when they come and they land and they're here they look they look more like humans. Mm-hmm. They look different. So would you say that it's like a mind trick? No. Mm-hmm. No, they have a they have a they have a form. They took on a form. They took on a form that gave them the ability to be on this planet. Mm-hmm. Okay. They had they had they could do that. They could do the physical form that was required for here. Mm-hmm. It was different than the humans who were here, but not that much different. Mm-hmm. So would you say that they were reptilian form and then somehow shifted, like like a shape shift into human form? No, they said genetic. They're saying genetic engineering. Okay. Oh, through genetic genetic engineering. And then did they end up, um, say, uh, um, intermingling with the human race? Yes, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. And is that why the human race has, uh, specifically some of them, have reptilian within their DNA? There's there's some from the intermarriage and and then also from the engineering. Mm-hmm. The ones who came here had advanced technology. To do this. Mm. And what dimension were they existing in before they came? They were fourth dimension. Mm-hmm. 
So that's why it was easy for them just to come forth onto a fourth dimensional planet. Yes. And what if they tried to go to like a sixth or a seventh dimensional planet? Would, would they be able to if they're in a fourth dimension? They can do that, but they can't do that here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would you say that this is who's, say, running the planet right now? Why they're, um, we are, especially in these sessions, we are finding, you know, AI type technology, consciousness that are kind of like viruses in, um, in the food, in the water. Are they the ones in, in charge of this? Are they behind us? Oh yes, they have been for a long time, but they're they're, they're being defeated now. Mm -hmm. Slowly, but surely, it's picking up speed. Mm -hmm. I see them running. Before they were, before people were running away from them, mm -hmm. but now they're running away from. Wonderful. I'm seeing the right now. It's the. I'm sh they're showing me all of the, the light workers and star seeds, everyone who incarnated here to defeat them. Mm. Well, like you said, it's all one big experiment. It's part of the, I say, you can say the game. I wanted to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. We could have stopped it. We could have stopped it, but we wanted to see mm -hmm. what would happen. And I know that you're able to see in all time, all time and space. So does something beautiful come out of this experiment? Oh yes, in the end, it all, it all comes together. For good, mm -hmm. for everyone involved. Is there, um, and then when you said Dragonoid, um, is this, I want to um, make sure that we clarify here, are you talking about dragons, dragons, the ones that are part of the elements, or is this a different type of Dragonoids, reptilians? <laughs> Not an, not the elemental, no. not element trick. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. Beautiful. Now, um, let me see. What was the question I had? Are there some that are still in their reptilian original form on Earth hiding somewhere? So they're showing me like humans that are they they covered themselves with their robes when you said that so i feel like there are hiding there are some that are trying to trying to hide their true form mm. so you said they cloak themselves with their robe they cloak they covered themselves with the robe but they're hiding themselves they don't want us to know mm -hmm. their true form then I also see people, just people that, like normal, what we would think of as normal everyday people. What percentage? Uh-huh, go ahead, sorry. What after? Um, they said about 18 to 20 percent. 18 to 20 percent are actual reptilians? At Mass, their core. At their core? Yeah. Mass. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are those people that you would say that they, they are, I want to say evil, but they're really um, hateful and... Mm. On Earth, mm -hmm. on Earth, many are perceived to be good people, thought of as leaders. However, These they're, are, mm -hmm. they're not. Yeah. They're, 
everybody, everybody says, oh, they're so talented. Mm -hmm. They watch their food, they listen to their music. They're the leaders. Mm -hmm. In religions, in government, in the media. Mm-hmm. So there are in leadership positions and like fame and you could say money positions. Yeah. Yeah, they they put themselves there and they hold on to those positions. Mm-hmm. The people don't know mm -hmm. why we had to come here. We had to show them. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's beautiful that you're saying that they're, they're now running from us. Thank you. I have um, myself seen this as well. So I thank you for that confirmation. Um, let's see what else. Um, the chemtrails. I've really been observing the chemtrails. Can you tell me um, what specifically? What is it that they're dropping on us? On us. There's, there's many things. Many things they're doing mm -hmm. to hurt our environment, to hurt the people. Mm -hmm. The chemtrails are only a small part of it. Mm -hmm. They have a big effect. On food, on weather. Which affects everything on the planet. Mm -hmm. It needs to stop soon. It will, it, it, it will stop soon. Yes. Yes. Like, how do we get them to stop? And we, do you have an answer, a, a guidance for that? How can we get them to stop spraying our, our skies? People well, from the inside, there are many, many, who are moving into positions mm -hmm. of influence, power. Mm -hmm. This is how they're running. There's a battle, there's a war. There's a, there's a war, a battle for control. Mm -hmm. It's going on far more than anyone realizes. Yes. Underneath and behind the scenes, many, many of the conscious Star seeds, the creators like you and me, mm -hmm. seem to be placed in positions of leadership and power to end this. This was the call we heeded that went out. It had to be changed from the inside, mm -hmm. from the inside only. We couldn't do it from the outside. We had to go in. Yes. We had to go in earth. And from there, we had to go inside of the systems of control. Mm -hmm. They're breaking the systems of control down. Was there a lot of walk-ins into some of these leaderships? Those? Yes, there are walk-ins. Mm -hmm. There are many walk-ins. Mm -hmm. So people you thought were of the dark, who were of the dark, mm -hmm. are now turning to the light. You would be surprised. 
-hmm. You'd be very, very surprised. They're, they're still lining things up. I'm getting like ducks in a row before enough in position to openly begin to change the way things are. Mm -hmm. Humanity sent out the call. They asked for help and we helped. Gaia called us and we helped. Mm -hmm. Are you um, in connection? Do you have any connection to the Rock Collective? Yes, we are the Rock Collective. Mm -hmm. You know this. Yes. Thank you. I, I know this, but it's always wonderful to hear from others so that we can get those reconfirmations for others to understand. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, let's see. Now, is there a way, oh, so back to the chemtrail, sorry, I wanted to finish up with that. Um, can you confirm in the manner of the type of what it is? Is it a, uh, would you say like a live consciousness, like kind of like AI type? What they're spraying? The spray activates. The spray itself is not, the spray itself is not, it activates what's been Mm -hmm. It's an activator. An activator. They have. It's a. It's part of it. It's not the. It's not the only thing. Mm. It's part of the process. Okay. And what is it that they activate, or the goal that they're trying to activate? So, children are implanted upon at birth, mm -hmm. implanted with implants. These implants need continual, continual fortification support aren't the right words, but mm -hmm. Without the chemtrails, the implants do not continue to work. Mm. And these implants, you mean that they're implanted when? At what point are they implanted? Um, when they were born, as they're born, before they're born, how are they implanted? Physical implants are implanted with vaccines at birth. Oh. And and updated vaccines mm -hmm. as, vac as needed. Mm -hmm. The sprays have other many other effects as well. This is just part of it. Like I mm -hmm. said, there's just Mm -hmm. one, one aspect of it. And are these implants meant to um, stop their abilities? What are they meant for? The implants numb. They can never stop. They can never stop the ability. But they can numb with implants, with environment, programming through color, through sound, which is delivered through media, through frequencies you don't hear. Mm -hmm. Frequencies are everywhere. These also affect. The implants are key. Without the implant, they have much less ability to control through these environmental 
environmental frequencies that they're putting out mm -hmm. through the spray. So people understand the aluminum in the sprays and the fluoride in the water interact. But without the impact, the impact is much, much less. Mm -hmm. People understand vaccines are dangerous. They don't understand the implant part of the vaccine. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. It is needed. This explanation was very much needed. Thank you. Now, what about, um, say, as a parent, you're, you're concerned now your child um, has had these vaccines and they have implants within them. How is it that you're able, how can you heal them from that? Thank you for asking this question. Mm -hmm. Billy did not vaccine, vaccinate her children until later. She was very worried about vaccines. Border mm -hmm. was vaccinated at birth, but then she hesitated to give more vaccines for a long time and finally relented. Mm -hmm. Both of her kids are only partially vaccinated. This is good. If she'd listened to her guidance and not vaccinated, that would have been better. Mm -hmm. But understand that the energy field that she and other light workers emit frequencies that counteract these to a great degree. Physical proximity to being that give these frequencies off, vibrate these frequencies, these higher frequencies, counteract. Also, know that the implants have a lifespan. They don't last forever. Mm. So, this is why updating vaccines is pushed for so hard. Mm -hmm. The idea of vaccines itself is not a bad idea. It's what's put in the vaccines that is. So over time, minimizing exposure to mm -hmm. influences on the implants, which would be frequencies in the home from television, from electronic devices mm. is helpful, but understand frequencies are being broadcast everywhere. Mm -hmm. So minimizing what you can in the home helps, but it's not complete protection by any means. However, mm -hmm. drinking pure water Without the fluoride helps. Mm -hmm. The idea of eating organic food is a nice one, but it's very, very minimal benefit. Everything is sprayed. At this time, mm -hmm. there's very little one can do to get away from it. Yes. Know that time will come soon where this will end. Mm -hmm. Non-genetically modified food will be reintroduced into the human food chain and supply. As you know, vast stores of seeds have already been stored for selfish purposes of those who wanted to eradicate human life on Earth and start over with mm -hmm. only their own bloodline. Mm -hmm. The Alliance against these will access these seeds and reintroduce them for healthy foods to be available. Mm -hmm. Once the Chemtrails stop. 
Mm -hmm. Once the spring in the fields is halted, it's happening sooner than you think. Wonderful. How about, um, say, let's see what else. Um, okay, so is that why they also have, for example, like the flu vaccine, um, they try to get the adults to do them so that they could reinsert those implants? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why. And I myself have had experiences um, at the hospital I go to where I can see the doctors that are reptilians. <laughs> Um, can you confirm this? Do, do these hospitals have doctors that are reptilians? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That, that are working for... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really had an experience with this in the hospital one time. Mm -hmm. Going in for routine x-ray exam. Yeah. He had a panic attack. Mm -hmm and was admitted into the ER briefly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know this, but this is why, because her energy sensed the danger there. She was protected. Mm -hmm. But this is why. Not all doctors do know this, only some. Yes. Most, most are good. And it seems like they're the ones that I, I met, they're, they're planted there, like um, they're, they make sure that they have some planted in every hospital. Oh, I yeah. Okay. okay. And the entire hospital systems are all set up hmm. and controlled from the early inception of the hospital systems you have in place today or set up and controlled by this group. You would know them. People call them the Illuminati. There's many names for them. Yes. But they, they control all of the healthcare system from the beginning. And with that, with the Illuminati, see, um, I don't share as uh, all the information that I receive on a daily basis as far as the different battles that are going on. But earlier you mentioned that there's so much more going on than we realize behind the scenes. So I thank you for confirming that from what I already received. And um, it's, it's good for people to understand that though we don't want to feed fear into it, um, there is unfortunately some people want to believe in, that, in the non-duality. However, there's uh, many of us you know, in dream time or even just within a shifting of our vibration, uh, really countering these battles. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very exciting, very exciting time to see this unfold. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Yes. And we're very excited, as it were, to get to roll up our sleeves and get right in the middle of it. To be born and live in a human body on this planet at this time mm -hmm. so we could experience it from a first-hand perspective as well as from the higher perspectives of the higher vibration yes and um let's see what else i have just a few more questions now I have a couple more questions on this and then we'll move on to the questions that she has, okay? Thank you. Thank you for answering all these questions. I think um, humanity needs to know them in whichever manner they'll be delivered. Um, thank you, thank you. Now, as far as say, uh, what was it that you said that we can, uh, how can we transmute the implants that are on our children? So, Energetic frequencies of crystals interrupt mm. interrupt the implant's ability to affect the mind. Mm -hmm. Placing crystals at their bedside, underneath their bed, 
is one way put some in their backpack mm -hmm. for when they go to school. Have them wear a crystal around their neck. Yes. But these crystals must be infused with intention of protection for the greatest benefit to occur. Yes. Thank you. These are great or techniques. Uh huh. Eating healthfully and drinking lots of water helps as well because this makes them more of a clear channel. Mm -hmm. It helps the crystals align their energy more easily. This may seem simple and seem like hocus pocus, but it is not. The science behind crystals, the science and the technology is not well understood by humans. Some of the most powerful protecting energy, the Herkimer diamond that Kimberly was led to buy. Mm -hmm. For the size, it's the most powerful for its size. Mm. Although crystal is, is beneficial, especially clear quartz for this purpose. Mm. So would that also protect you from the frequencies of the media the, the that we can't see or hear? It mitigates it. Mm -hmm. It mitigates it does help. All crystals help. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, is there a difference that they do, for example, uh, to the 13 year old shots? You know how the children turn 13 and the parents blame it, society blames it on all, oh, you know, they're just teenagers, they're wild and we can't control them because they're teenagers and they're hormones. Are these flutes, flus, and, but they're giving them flu, I mean, they're giving them shots at, they're requiring it in schools to give it to them, you know, right around that 13 year mark. Um, so is it connected to why they act in this manner? It, there is a strong connection, and the connection is that this is working with the child's hormones, these, these implants. Mm -hmm. They're timed specifically for that age to, I want to use the word to channel, um, the changes in the child's body toward this desired outcome, which is complacency, mm -hmm. acceptance, acceptance of the programming that's given them. So again, there's no one single thing that's affecting it, everybody. Yes. If your child, if children are not vaccinated, they don't have the implants. So the programming of the frequencies, whether they're watching television or listening to music or not, whatever frequencies they're exposed to, but the more they're around specific frequency emitters in their home, of course, has a greater effect, but these frequencies are everywhere. So it's a layer upon layer upon layer of an effect with all the different ways that and means which are used to control, but every piece of the layer that you're able to remove or to mitigate, you have that much less effect. This is why Kimberly chose to be born in a home where so much more protection and shelter was given. Mm -hmm. Ill, she was unable to maintain purity from 
as she was injected with shots mm. and vaccines as a child and as an adult. Mm -hmm. She did drink unfluoridated water, well water her whole life. That helped. These are just examples of mm -hmm. ways in, in her home, different frequencies, different influences were eliminated, but not all. It's mm -hmm. not possible to eliminate all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, could perhaps, for example, you know how I work with energy, could uh, parents bring, um, first of all, very important because I hear many stories and at times I hear um, parents bringing children to light workers, spiritual leaders that are actually working for the dark. And now they've done extra energy work on their children. But is there a way if, if it's a, a light worker like um, that works from the heart, um, can you can we transmute those implants in the children? Can we remove them through energy, through frequency of love light? So you are able to do this with energetic implants for sure. Physical implants, you have an effect on them but take a multi-leveled approach. Mm. So your frequency interrupts those implants and sometimes causes them to have a complete, but not always. So just understand this. Your desire and intent to disrupt the physical implant is admired and appreciated, but its effect is limited. Mm -hmm. So parents need to take a multifaceted approach mm -hmm. until a given implant completely becomes the defected, mm -hmm. not defected, un unactivated. It expires in the sense, right? Expires mm -hmm. or, or just gets destroyed. It can be destroyed. Sometimes you are able to destroy it. You just, you can't guarantee though mm -hmm. that at any given time you can absolutely destroy an implant. So this is why a multifaceted approach is the best, is yes. ideal. Yes, but would you say that, say an extremely, um, say a uh, powerful healer um, that lives in love life strongly, would they be able to, 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 to um, you know, transmute that implant out of there, deactivate it? But it would they can have zap, they, they can zap it. Mm -hmm. as it were, and, and destroy it. But it would take this someone is, very powerful, right? It would be powerful. Mm -hmm. There are very few who can do this. So... I'm asking you because, because... I'm sorry, I'm asking you because you're telling me right now in my mind that I can do it. So that's why I'm asking yeah. you. Okay. Okay. We would just caution your listeners. This is what I was going to say before you said that. We would caution your listeners because... Mm -hmm. There are very few who have this ability, mm -hmm. and so if you go to a healer who says they can transmute them, mm -hmm. there you may go to some who, in their desire and, and purity of heart, believe they can, but they may not be able to. Mm -hmm. So don't... We don't want you to feel as if, now that there's a hierarchy of healers, mm -hmm. yeah. in a sense, in perspective, but there is. Some healers are far more powerful than others. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't or couldn't be benefited by a low of power. It's okay. Just understand this yes there are some that have more ability than others yes so 
Very good. Thank you. Thank you for um, confirming what you were saying. I, I never really thought of um, offering the service, but if I can help out children in whichever manner I can, you know, I will. Yes. Thank you. Um, this will be, this will become easier and easier to do as earth vibrations raise. Yes. Healers that now do not have the ability to do it will be able to be able to do it soon. Wonderful. Every, everything is raising. It's affecting everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, thank you for all those answers. Is there anything else that we went into detail really there? Um, uh, would you say as her higher self, as her higher self, would you suggest for her to share this video um, to the public? I know this information is uh, quite uh, awakening as multitude in awareness and also has ways that we can um, help the children and help overall humanity. So would you suggest for her to share this video? This is why she was prompted to come to you for this reading. Oh. And I would like for her to be willing to share it. Oh, thank you. That means so much to my heart, <laughs> especially the aiding the um, from these, you know, implants and, and so on, and especially the children. Thank you. She, she needs to have her own children be brought for healing for this. Yes. For the act of this would be beneficial. Their, their implants are still active. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Um, are we done with this topic? Can I move on to her questions now? Yes. Thank you. And how is she holding up? Is she good? She's doing very well, thank you. Wonderful. Now, okay, she, she has mission. Why did she volunteer to come here? She wanted to see it from the inside out. She wanted to be here on this level to experience it as a human. I should say I wanted to because of course this is me, Aria. I wanted this experience through her. Mm -hmm. And I thank her and love her as myself this aspect of myself for doing this, for taking this on. Mm -hmm. We know it isn't easy. It's very, very hard. It's very hard. We appreciate the willingness of this aspect of ourselves, this fractal, which separates from us and feels so separate. It feels alone. It feels as if it's lost, but it is not. It is always being watched over and lovingly guided and cared for. We thank it for this experience. We thank her for this experience, mm -hmm. for taking this on. Beautiful. Let's see. What did I, um, what, I'm gonna read it how she would say. What did I hope to do and to accomplish? As an observer, a first-hand observer in the first person, to transmit this first-person experience back to the whole of her being, so she can say, I was there, I did that, I've been there, I've done it. From her own perspective, this was a portion of the purpose. The other portion of the purpose, as a frequency emitter, as a transmuter of energy, as a negative into the positive, the alchemy. through her body. She does not begin to realize the effect 
Mm -hmm. So she has that only on her immediate surroundings, but on the planet. Yes. Like an antenna and grounding it into Earth. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the alchemy? Is this alchemy embedded into her essence, all that is her in this existence? Yes, all of the experiences that she had, she had many experiences that are weighed heavily on her heart that feel sad, that feel heartbreaking, that feel like rejection, that feel like abandonment. She agreed to take all of these experiences on, to transmute them into neutral or positive energy, change them within herself. These experiences come to her, have an energy of their own inside of her, but then they come out of her in love light through her heart chakra, mm -hmm. completely changed. Beautiful. The purpose for these experiences, this is why she agreed to have them and continues to have them. Mm -hmm. Is that part of her mission? This is her mission. Mm -hmm. Very good. She has a very active, creative mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes judging herself for jumping from one focus to another. She needs to allow herself this room to play. This is part of the transmuting of the energy, mm -hmm. the experimentation, the creativity, whether it's building something or sewing something or in her artwork. In her imagination, running wild, it doesn't matter whether it created something in the physical realm or not. Mm -hmm. This is part of the process of transmuting this energy that seems very unrelated to her. She doesn't see the connection. This is why we tell her just to allow herself to be free and express herself however she feels like thank you and um she wants to know is there anything important she hasn't discovered that pertains to what she is doing now as always it is a step-by-step -step process She knows deep in her heart that each step is always revealed when it needs to be taken. This is sometimes frustrating. Humans want to know the end from the beginning. But if we give that information now, it will spoil the process mm -hmm. of what she seemed to do because it is in surrender to the divine will and to the now moment that her mission is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now she says, I f she feels restless and bored like she, don't, like she doesn't have a purpose or something to do right now. I don't know. She's not sure if she wants to do any anything. What advice do you have for her there? So, <laughs> I'm laughing because she will always find something to do. Mm, right. <laughs> allow, allow her heart to lead her. Either in doing nothing or doing everything, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever flight of fancy, there's judgment. There's judgment that holds her back at times. So allowing anything and everything in 
this is a higher vibration of fun, of laughter, of light, of creativity, of self-development, whatever interests her. She is free to explore as much as she wishes or as little as she wishes to do. Mm -hmm. She has in the past had the mistaken idea that she was here to do something grand, something big. At times she saw in this motivation to create something large, she understood that it might be, as in her words, Am I deluded with visions of grandeur? <laughs> but she wasn't. She was just following her heart, creating with her mind, bringing it to physical reality as she could, in what steps she could. It always served a purpose. There was no judgment in that. When the time came to let it go, she let it go easily. So there's no judgment. When the time create, came to create something new, she entered it without reservation. This is all as it should be. She's mm -hmm. far more advanced and following of her path than she realizes. So as we've said before, releasing judgment on herself for any choices she makes is the most important thing she can do for her mission. Mm -hmm. She's always being guided and she listens very well to her guidance. Thank you. Let's see what else she has here. Oh, you know, um, when you showed her with a lion, why is it that uh, Aria, Archangel Ariel, is um, always showed with a lion? What is your significance and your connection to the lion? Humans would call it the totem. The totem animal. It's like a familiar spirit, in a sense. Um, a an aspect, another face of my energy, another fractal of who I am. It is the courage, it is the strength. It is more for human connection, understanding, representation of an aspect of who I am. Mm -hmm. fire, the Leo energy, which is why she was born with the Leo rising. Yes. Another Go. face of who I am. Go ahead. Just another face of who I am. Mm -hmm. Could um, she also be doing, you could say, the energy work herself and helping others heal? Yes, she could be. Mm -hmm. She can do this very easily. Mm -hmm. She does do this unintentionally, but with intention more so. Mm -hmm. Um, she says that she can't uh, quite remember. She she feels like she's doing much more in dream time, um, but she doesn't like she, they're not significant the dreams when she remembers them. What can you share with her on what she's actually doing in dream time? During dream time, we are very very busy. Mm -hmm. We understand she would like to have memory recollection of her 
activities during dream time, but it is not time for that yet and won't be for some time. Just understand your human conscious, your planetary mind is needs its break. And if you could remember everything you did at night during your, your higher conscious, but of which your higher conscious is aware, if your planetary mind were conscious of all that occurs, it would be a distraction. It would also be too much of a taxation. Your planetary mind needs its rest. And so we give you what she calls cover dreams. Hmm. They really have no specific depth of meaning. Mm-hmm. Just to keep your planetary mind occupied at dream time. On occasion, we bring forth messages and dreams, and she knows this. Mm -hmm. Just accept, surrender and accept this because the time will come when more of a bleed through will occur, but your mission on earth is to be human. So if you have all your memories of your dream time activities, you would have a very hard time coming back and being human. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I understand. So can you explain to me as far as dream time? Um, I've been shown in a certain way. So what happens, um, say we, we go to sleep and what happens to our spirit, our consciousness? To our, our human consciousness? Yes, our human consciousness. What happens to it as we're sleeping? So the human consciousness is given like a cocoon, a, um, a bubble of protection to be in because it's too much for it to be aware of everything that's happening on Earth at this time, mm-hmm. that the higher consciousness is aware of. What she doesn't understand is that the merge between dim- all dimensions and consciousness is taken place so that without the shadow and the veil between her 3D consciousness and her higher self, would have full awareness uh, awareness of everything this really is this is the this is what ascension is about and because her own personal ascension must be timed with what is taking place on earth she has to continue to wear the veil between her human consciousness and her higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. So if we remove that veil, she would be walking around as a fully ascended human being. It's not time for that yet. Mm -hmm. And so she wears the veil. And so we veil her consciousness during dream time Mm -hmm. because her her higher consciousness is all one. It's already one with, with it is me. Mm-hmm. At night, there's no veil. Mm-hmm. And she knows everything. And it's not time to know everything yet. Otherwise, she would not be able to remain in her human form. It would be too much for her human form to handle. Yes. Would you say that in a sense, uh, to her consciousness here, um, does it travel back, in a sense, to the higher self and come back to union, or how does that work? It is the higher self. It is in union. This is a process that has been 
Mm -hmm. Ongoing for humanity. For a long time and others will get there. Others will achieve this as the vibrations continue to raise. It's like a domino effect in a mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. So this veil that separates is the way you describe it is one way of looking at it, but it's just mm -hmm. it already is one. Yes, it's, it's really hard to explain because, yes, that's what I was seeing, like, it becomes, like, whole once more. It, it um, there is no separation, but, um, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah. It is hard. Humans, you just can't fully understand this, so there's many different ways to try to explain it, but in a sense, mm -hmm. the ascension process is, is, already complete mm -hmm. we're waiting to catch up we're waiting for the people of earth to catch up before we remove the veil that separates the consciousness of the planetary mind with the the full consciousness of the higher self yes mm -hmm. kimberly because she has a sense of all of this but finds the veil frustrating and the patience of the waiting for events to take place that allow this to occur. We understand this and we, we support and love and give our sympathy, love for, for this difficult. Mm -hmm. It was easier to be fully human with the veil fully in place. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. Would you say that in a sense, if we knew everything, we would break down and fall apart? I don't, it depends on the person. Some people might. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Kimberly's conscious is just not time yet. Yes. Very good. So, okay, so but it would, I, oh, go ahead. More, it would make it more of a trial to live an everyday life. Mm -hmm. So this is what I was being shown, basically. I'm going to try to explain it. So we fall asleep and um, we our spirit our human consciousness um you know the fractal that is here kind of leaves in a sense the vessel and then it goes back where it's uh one even though we're we're already the higher self but it, it almost like it, it it joins back and it continues am i explaining that right <laughs> yeah that's a good way of putting it okay we see we see it as a a piece of that consciousness that um it's it's always protected in a like a cocoon or a bubble from its full identity as its higher self origin and it's for its own okay ability to function in a human body yes very good thank you for that explanation okay so at this time, can you do a body scan on her, please? She needs to drink some water. Yes. Does she have some air? Can you guide her to the water? Okay, she needs to hold on to the black tourmaline at her head. Okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. She's feeling somewhat dizzy. Yes. So it's best if they if she holds it in her hand then. Yes. Good, good. As you please help her dizziness now and help her ground more. And when you are ready, um, if you could do the body scan and let me know what you find that acquires healing. Keep proceeding with the body scan now. We see from the top of her head. Mm -hmm. Down to her shoulders, her arms, her torso, her legs. Mm 
adjusting if needed. Okay. There are some areas for slow energy flow. We're opening now. Go ahead. Opening it up to even out the flow, maintain. Maintain a beautiful flow. The energy is flowing, we can continue. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, okay, can you scan her for any transplants, please? We do not see any negative transplants in her any implants. There are no negative implants in her at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant implants, sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, no, no negative implants, good. Um, how about entities? There are no negative entities at this time. Wonderful. Good, good. And did she do this on her own? She's done a lot of it on her own without her knowledge, and she's also had help mm -hmm. as needed. Beautiful. Okay. Now, um, can you look, can you tell us why does she have the dermatitis, the, it's a very long name, why does she constant? Uh, itch in the back of her head. Why does she have this condition that they've named it? So she has done extensive work on this already and she has full awareness. We have been very thorough along the way to speak to each of the, the aspects of the energy where they were connected within her. Mm -hmm. It is a physical manifestation in the form of dermatitis hercotiformis that is related to, on a physical level, related to the gluten intake. And an energetic level, she understands this has had taken root from childhood, mm -hmm. but it also goes back to energies she agreed to take on of a for the human collective for those who suffer from celiac disease which has been brought about by lifetimes of many many generations of lifetimes of lack and famine mm -hmm. and not having enough food so that the body ended up attacking itself and its ability to extract the nutrients from food mm. the manifestation of this lack in the physical form the experience lack of a form in a sense as a child from the restrictive diet mm. including not only what was allowed to be eaten and not eaten, but the restricted eating times. This was agreed to as assimilation of the starvation that humans have, have experienced on this planet. Mm. Of course, it does not seem beneficial for to her to be born into a body or a place where actual starvation occurred, such as in countries where, or homes where food was hard to come by or not easily accessible. So it was simulated through this restrictive diet. Mm. Nothing was that at the time, the right time, this disease would have a manifestation in her body so she could heal it. She's a very powerful healer. 
Mm. In her human form, she's a very powerful healer. Of course, in her divine form, she can heal any. See? If coming closer and closer to full acceptance of this power, when she fully comes into her power as a divine healer, she herself will experience complete remission of this, not only of the symptoms of the disease, but of the actual physical processes of disease within her body. Whether whether the disease is being assimilated in her body or whether it's in the DNA as an actual form in material, her ability to heal it will be complete. We cannot stress this enough. Mm -hmm. All that remains left is the full acceptance of this power for healing. And so much that if she were to choose to do so, she could eat of these foods and have no effect mm. on her physical form. Mm -hmm. She has been told this, but there is something in her that still resists believing it. This is simply the human condition, the human condition of denying the power that is within us all, transforming, transmuting this belief into energy of acceptance and power is critical for the ascension process of all humans. Mm. So as she comes to the point where she transmutes the, transmutes the final pieces, the final tendrils of this belief within her and transmutes them, she will be opening a way for ascension not only for herself, but for others to follow. This, in a sense, is one of the most important reasons that she came. When she accepts this responsibility, mm -hmm. not only for herself, but for others and for Gaia, she will experience complete healing and open the way for moving forward in the ascension process. Beautiful. Yes, I, I, I love to say, uh, I always love to say um, when we heal ourselves, we heal the collective, we heal our ancestors, we heal all. So thank you. It's beautiful. Many people who are suffering from celiac disease on earth now mm -hmm. are suffering it from it in a similar way that she herself. Mm -hmm. All have the ability to transmute the energies of this DNA construct into the accurate replication of the cells within the body, within the intestines, within everything. She is the forerunner of this process. There are others who are doing it as well. She's not the only one. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. We thank all that are doing it. Thank you. Now, as far as her, I know that we normally do body scan and we heal this. Can we, can we just go ahead and heal this for her? The time is here to experience relief of the symptoms of itching. The ability to shift into full remission of this disease has been within her grasp mm -hmm. for some time. She's coming closer and closer to this. 
our time spent here with you now mm -hmm. will be a leap forward into that process. Wonderful. So we invite you to add to her energy now and to bring about the process. It seems like we want to show you like a pulling pulling it out by the roots. There are many, many, many tendrils. Mm. Many have already been pulled. She's done a very good job of pulling some of the largest roots out. And then there was a process of just allowing time and energy to take its course to loosen the dirt around the finer threads mm. of the roots of this energy yes. this energy that that has its roots in not only her own experiences but of all humankind Mm -hmm. We remind her that she took on so much more than she herself even experienced consciously. Mm -hmm. So having patience with herself, having patience with the process. This is not a quick time, not because you're not a powerful healer, not because you're not able and capable, or not because you're not stepping into your power mm -hmm. but the energies on this planet had a very tight hold so there were external forces as well this disease was allowed to be manifest in her life only when the time was right for the ability to heal it within a reasonable amount of time we congratulate her on her patience with it because we know that within her body, the physical symptoms at times were unbearable. Mm. Yet she persevered with patience, with fortitude, with bravery, with love, with allowing, with surrender. And when the time was right, came to you now for this session because it is time for it to be pulled out completely. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that makes me want to cry. That is so beautiful. Thank you. May I start working on her now? Yes. Yes, we ask you to do this now. Mm. She is working together. Ooh. Wonderful. We'll work in union. Let me know. I'm focusing thought form, my intent upon it now. And I see it pulling, like the roots are, are uh, ruffling up and like, uh, I guess you would say like a plant and it's removing the roots and then they're becoming loose, like you said, from the from the dirt. That's how I'm seeing it now. And let me know what else I need to do to, to um, ensure we we complete this. You're working in concert with her, with me, in this process, and it's going very well. Beautiful. We will allow her to be in silence for a few more minutes. You will know when it's complete. Very good. Her body is experiencing symptoms that make it easier for her to lie in silence at this time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be silent as well.
Let me know when you are ready for me to pull it out, okay? Okay, she's ready for it to come out now. Good. I'm going to grab it and pull it out. Thank you for your work. Thank you. There are Kimberly's 3D body form. We thank you for holding the energy of Arya. It is a very high energy mm -hmm. to hold. At times there have been many symptoms. A discomfort in holding this high energy. Yes. We thank you for agreeing to be the vessel for this energy for the sake of humanity at this time and for the ability for Aria to experience going through the shift on Earth as it transcends from the three dimension, four dimension to the fifth dimension. We thank you for containing this energy. And we ask you now at this time to release all of the hold that you have on these energies you agreed to take on. These energies of lack, these energies of programming within the human consciousness of starvation. Mm -hmm of all the pain of the starvation of humanity for thousands upon thousands of years of suffering of little children, of suffering of mothers as they're nursing their babies and didn't have enough milk. Of the death and the suffering that took place on this earth because of this, this dark, these dark beings that came here on earth at this time. They are being pulled out by the root, just as we pull out the root of this disease in your body. At this time, they are being pulled out. Every root, every branch, they will no longer have a hold on humanity. And Gaia, as she ascends into the higher dimension, our time on earth is up. And the time and these energies to be manifest in her body is up. It is no longer beneficial for her to hold on to these energies, these lower energies of lack and the starvation, and she can let them go and let them light. And she can transmute them and neutralize them into, into neutral and loving energy and release it into the light at this time. Yes. And so it is. And so it, and is. So it is. Yeah. So it is. So it is. I don't know when it's complete. It is complete. Thank you. <laughs> Such an emotional healing as I can feel the, the, the collective healing from the starvation. Thank you. She's done so much today. Yes, and her body feels that she's also very hungry. Mm -hmm. Her hand, there's numbness in her hand. Yes, I'm very hungry too. <laughs> oh, thank you now uh, may I continue to ask the last question or how is she doing you can ask a few more questions but it's almost time to be done okay very good now she wants to know about the shift event she'd like to know what her perception will be like will she be in a physical body when it occurs Yes, she will be in a physical body when it occurs. Mm -hmm. 
and if so, what will her experience? Um, so, what will I, what will she experience when it occurs? We have we have spoken to her of this already. Mm -hmm. She can trust the information that has come through. Mm -hmm. There will be more of a cumulative effect of wave after wave after wave of energy, each wave stronger than the last, mm -hmm. but each wave being hardly more perceptible than the one before, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yes. The vibration is so much ready that these waves come through with very, they seem mild to her. Mm -hmm. so that her vessel is able to absorb each wave as it comes without a jarring effect. Mm -hmm. That said, however, there will come a time when the cumulative effect on the planet is such that others have a much stronger perception of these waves when they occur and she will notice this in an outward sense as it's reflected to her through the eyes of others. Mm -hmm. Her own perception, however, will be more of like, yeah, okay, I know, I saw that already. It's been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is why everybody's perception of the event is different based on how the energies hit their own body at mm -hmm. any given time. And yet the energies are hitting the planet in waves, wave after wave after wave. If it all came at one time, it would destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. This is not ideal. This is not an ideal scenario. The light workers who came in great number over the last 50 years or so, mm -hmm. more and less, have had a huge effect on changing the ability of Earth to absorb these energies so that every wave of energy was transmuted into positive, beneficial effect without as much of a negative effect that would have otherwise been experienced had they not agreed to come into human form at this time. Mm -hmm. This is another reason that she was born because of transmuting these energies as they come in and helping. I'm searching for the right words. It's like mitigating the effect, but it doesn't lessen the effect on her. It spreads it out. So instead of it jarring Earth, it lovingly bathes her in light that is more readily available for use to everything and everyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. Their bodies change the frequency of the light and turn it into a more readily available form. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's see what else she has here. Let me know if you need to end it at any point.
And I think he, did you answer um, pretty much how will it happen? What would happen to her during the time of the, the event? Mm -hmm. We have told her already that it is not one big mm -hmm. jarring of a yes. series of energetic changes so that the shift is a better term yes. than the the shift is already taking place and will continue to accelerate. Accelerate, accelerate. Yes. And she wants to know what will she, um, what will her life existence be like after it occurs? This is something that we would prefer not to show her at this time. Okay. There are a number of possible timelines mm -hmm. she won't be able to choose from. Mm. But showing her at this time would um, lessen the effect of the ability for her to have free will choice yes. in how she would proceed. Mm -hmm. This is no consequence. Very good. Now, um, one last question and we should wrap it up. Um, you mentioned that you're called the ancient ones. Uh, in the hu we, we humans um, uh, have a race called uh, the ancient builder race. What is your connection with the ancient builder race? as the ancient ones. This is another term for the same thing. We are the ancient builder. Yes, thank you. That's what I thought. Sure. Wonderful. Now, um, is there anything I could have asked that I didn't ask that you would want to share with her? Anything else before we finish up? This is enough at this time. We thank you for your your work in helping her bring these things forward and go through the process. Oh, we thank, I, I thank you for bringing her to me. It's an honor. <laughs> and thank you, sister. Thank you. You are beautiful. I love you. I honor you. I thank you and I respect you. Blessings to my brothers and sisters. <laughs> thank you. Blessings to you. Love you all. May I bring her back now? Yes, you may. Thank you. Oh, oh my God! That was oh. super. Oh my goodness. That was such a beautiful oh. session. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Do you that remember? amazing yeah. i really do i think i remember pretty much all of it oh beautiful beautiful <sighs> yes how long do you think you were in there i don't know a couple hours i have no idea so almost three hours mm -hmm. wow <laughs> yeah. yeah right oh yeah oh the information that you shared was just oh my goodness it was a lot of was information new, uh, yes so many new information oh yes for me absolutely like um for example um what did you talk about you talked about the implants in the vaccines like i could see the the ai technology in it and i can see that but i love that you clarified that they're actual implants and then i love how you talked about how they expire at some time because i felt that strongly as well and i have yet to share that anywhere like it was a really like like a com confirmations of these things that have yet to be shared to humanity um oh that's good i know i never knew i never knew any of that before yeah I know that yes so this is all new and also like the reptilians i love how you explain 
the beginning that's why i was trying to get you to get at like that stuff like how was it that they came and how did that implant and it, how did that affect and what dimension were we in when they came in like these are answers that i've been searching for that i haven't been yet to be able to you know the divine planning wasn't there yet um you know confirmations as far as what like how the really the chemtrails are activators so i was seeing it like i was trying to clarify like i was seeing it like almost like it would join the the human right um and then i see it like kind of like uh coming to a, a life in a sense so it makes sense that it's an activator that really makes sense to me as far um, as it's oh it's as far as the chemtrails yes that they're activators yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. it was very clear she was like it's not the chemtrails themselves that are um mm -hmm. you know they're just they're, they're metals they're chemicals they're things but mm -hmm. the they continue on it was like i was seeing it too like they continue um i guess kind of feeding like the without mm -hmm. but it, it's even more like like there's just a lot of layers of complexity to the whole system yeah. of yes of ensnaring human minds because the soul the soul is always able like the soul oh this is coming to me right now uh -huh. the soul keeps the um ways to supersede all of the physical things you know so the the um the reptilians you know they're always trying to you know suppress humanity but humanity keeps on rising up and then they have other ways to suppress that so they, their technology keeps growing and growing but the soul does as well uh -huh. and so the soul keeps finding ways to break through that technology and still you know like comes forth like the soul's power is amazing but there's like part of the um the that you know each individual person has that there's an aspect of them that's saying yes i accept this control mm -hmm. so their free will allows all of these yeah. things to have this control over them in yes. a sense but then the soul is also part of that so it's just kind of like this it's a very very complex very complex thing yes but it's a good thing it's complex because the more complex it is it means there's also many 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 working parts and pieces and so if you can each you can deactivate and work on removing mm -hmm. like those different parts and pieces every one that you can deactivate and remove like gives you even more and more and more power beautiful and um as you were talking i was really feeling um ariel really strong to you so don't be surprised now especially oh, now. ariel because i never knew that i was from Arcane. I didn't know that. Yeah, so she had told you you were Aria, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I knew my higher name is Aria. I mean, that's what she goes by. Like, Aria is like a fractal of Ariel. Yeah, well, what part of the technique that I do is I, I start, so I start, you know, finding your higher self up there and making that strong connection so that you're able to go in deep like you did. You went in so beautifully deep. So this is what I normally can do when, so the, I saw her with her beautiful flowing hair. I saw you. And then um, once I saw you in that realm where you were with your brothers, with your, your partners, um, you, uh, I knew that you were Ariel at that point. And then that's why I asked, are you affiliated with Ariel? Because, you know, that's, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that we, we did talk about that. Uh, and I didn't know Ariel. Ariel is associated with a lion. The Archangel Ariel has a lion. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, are, you, are you, were you born? I think they said something about during the lion. I'm a, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm with a Pisces moon, but I'm Leo rising. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So thank you for this information. Oh it's just beautiful yeah. information i know i asked your higher self if you if she would think that it would be uh wonderful for you to share this do you still uh agree within your own free will um would you want to share this with humanity yes yeah i would be willing to do that and it's interesting so I, I thought i had a time i thought about whether i was and i was thinking i wouldn't want to but with what came forward you know like absolutely but some people need to know so awesome thank you oh I especially love the information that you gave as far as because I, I don't like to just give information like that's going to cause fear. I like to give techniques and ways that, okay, so this is what it is. Now, how can we heal it?
um so thank you for all the confirmations and all the different ways that you that you really you as ariel talked about um or aria talked about you know uh the crystals and these this is things that we haven't gone into detail yet in any of my sessions you gave me such needed information that is needed in this timeline it is ready obviously it was divinely planned and it is time for the uh the human collective to get this information um into them so this is what you're doing yeah. and thank you for healing the human collective i was crying with with the uh, with the hunger oh my goodness <laughs> no right i know my kids sometimes will say i'm hungry at night time but like, i can't go to bed hungry you know i'll let them eat something of and course. i'll feed them i'm like been hungry every night of my life it's nothing <laughs> <laughs> so it was but it is you know um it is something there's a lot of, i did a lot of healing a lot of healing about that already but I've, I've just you know i've been doing it for almost a year now of just related to this skin thing so it was just time for anything to be finished so which is why i felt guided to, to do the session with you i felt it like I was, time. it was time basically your uh, ego might try to tell you that you made this up but there's absolutely no way that you made this up the emotion that you felt in the tribe the emotion in the past life the emotion and healing i could feel that collective how you were helping to heal oh my goodness it, there's no way so please do not allow out your ego it's gonna try to because even if it did it to me you know but i had a curiosity which is a lot different than um this aura you know so is gonna try don't believe it this was very much real i'll talk to you later you're also going to be Good. channeling ariel you're going to be channeling her messages get ready i see an evolving in your spirit right now your soul it's going to evolve and really connect to her okay okay, okay. Good. all right love no. you talk to you later love you bye, bye.